Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Justin and the Food Entrepreneur's Podcast. I'm Justin Bazaar. I'm your host. That's B I Z Z A R R O. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Justin Bazaar. And you can find the podcast on Facebook and Instagram at Justin and the Food Entrepreneur's. Um, real quick before we introduce our guests for today, um, thank you, everyone, for signing up for the Food and Beverage Entrepreneur Summit in Milledgeville, Georgia on June 3rd and 4th. It is free for any of you guys out there that haven't had the chance to buy your tickets. They are going fast. Um, we have all, all, over 400 tickets, uh, quote unquote, sold so far, uh, signed up for. So if you're interested in going to the summit and collaborating with food and beverage entrepreneurs, farmers, uh, retail outlets, and other type of avenues. We are still doing that. So sign up now. Uh, It is different. We're going to treat it differently. We're going to have educational, motivational speakers, as well as um, activities based around six team, six person teams that will involve collaboration of the entrepreneurs. So they get to know each other and they have chances to to network with one another through TAS that also help get their products out there, um, introduce it to each other, introduce it to other people and those teams will switch throughout the summit over the two days so that's kind of cool um so with that being said i want to introduce our guest for episode 142 and that is chrissy harvey of chrissy's lovely small cakes from i can't ever say it but i'll let her tell her where she's from so chrissy how are you doing today i'm doing awesome how are you justin Good. I'm going to try it. for Scythe, Georgia? Yes. There we go. So it took it right. me a while. A little stumbled over myself. So Chrissy, give us like your story and how you became a food entrepreneur. What are all the things that led up to now? Um. Well, actually, um, I've always enjoyed cooking. My dad is actually a chef, so I've always enjoyed cooking and um, I just really got into like baking, maybe like a few years ago, maybe like about ten years ago, and I um, <clears throat> I just always like trying different recipes and stuff like that. Um, and I would bake, you know, every now and then when the holiday came around, I would, I would bake like a red velvet cake, and I would get compliments. Um, and then last year, I decided that I had took a break from school because I was trying to figure out like what I really wanted to go to school for. And um, I said, well, while I'm going to school, I could uh, bake um, on the side to get some extra income coming in while I'm in school. And that's how I kind of got started. And then uh, I just started giving out samples and doing my research. And um, I ended up uh, doing the cottage food, getting my cottage food license and just doing all my research and then I started going out to the farmer's market and that's how I kind of got started. So it was kind of like just an idea and then it kind of just went from there. So how'd you come up with the name for your business? Um, Actually, uh, my partner was telling me, he was like, oh, you should name it Chrissy Small Case. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought about it. And then I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe I can name it Chrissy's Lovely Small Case. So I had to give credit, 50-50 credit to my partner because he, he helped me um, come up with the name. Well, and I love this. So, okay. So have you always been interested in baking since you were a kid? I mean, is it something that you always had a passion for? Um, actually, um, like I said, my dad, I've always been around cooking, like my dad and my uncles, like they all cook and, you know, my dad would tell me stories about how he used to sit in the kitchen with him and watch his mom, um, cook and stuff. And my granddad used to cook and, um, actually I started really getting into cooking after I had my first son, actually when he turned one years old, cause I was like, I don't really want him eating a whole bunch of fast food, so I need to learn how to cook. And then once I got into that, like I really I like sweets and stuff like that. So I would I said, well, let me try to bake a red velvet cake because I like red velvet cake. So I was like, let me try to bake a red velvet cake. And when I did it, you know, like everybody loved it, and so I was like, okay. And then maybe like a few years later, 
um, you know, I would bake one every now and then, like a few years later. I was like, well, let me see how this, uh, how people like it, you know, more people, let's give it to them and see how they like it. And it, it I, I mean, they loved it. Like, I was like, okay, well, maybe I'm on to something. And I just kept giving people samples and asking them to try it. And, you know, like, I was, and then people would ask me, oh, can you bake this for me? And I was like, I've never baked that before. And so, like, they were like, oh, can you, one of my friends was like, can you bake a key lime cake? And, like, last year, I think it was last year, she had, like, a, kind of like a party for her graduation. She was like, well, I like key lime. Can you try key lime? So I was like, okay, I try key lime, and they end up loving it. And then um, somebody else asked me to bake uh, a carrot cake, and I was like, okay, I'll try that. I've never baked a carrot cake before, and I said, I'll try that. So I tried that, and they loved it. And it just kind of went from there. I, I feel like I kind of got like a like a taste for it, like I can really taste it, or I can, you know, I really it's um, I really have a lot of patience. And um, I was working with children before, so I, I think that kind of helped me with the baking. And I like recipes and, you know, um, baking, you have to be exact and you have to um, make sure that you're um, putting the right ingredients in the right amount. Because if you don't, then it'll, it'll mess up. But um, that's how I kind of got into it. Um, just I just I guess on a whim. And then I started getting serious about it um, when I was going back to school. And I was like, well, maybe I can get some extra income coming in. Um, and that's how I really got started. So with it. I want to tell the audience where to find you. I love your Facebook page, and that's Chrissy spelled K-R-I-S-S-I-E, apostrophe S, lovely small cakes, and cakes is spelled K-A-K-E-S for anyone that's out there. And, like, I'm probably drooled all over the microphone because I opened your page (laughs) earlier while I was setting up, and I'm seeing some reminiscence of the drool here. But there is this, I think they're red velvet cupcakes with pralines on them. Or uh, pecans, sorry. They're pecans or pecans, depending on what part of the country you're from. But they look amazing. And oh, so thank you. give me an idea of how you come up with the inspiration of the different flavors and the presentation. I mean, I mean, just putting the pecans on top of the... Um, The cupcake set looks pretty awesome. So give me an idea of of how you come up with the inspiration to do the different flavors, the different cakes, the different cupcakes. Um, Well, actually, I get it from the community. Honestly, like the flavors and stuff like that. Um, People ask me if I can do something. I love that. Like I love when people ask me, can you do this for me? And I'm like, yeah, I would definitely try to do it for you. And then, you know, I try to hit it out the park every time because my goal is to um, give somebody uh, a memory of a childhood memory. Like um, some people say, oh, my mom makes this really good red velvet cake. I had met someone this weekend. And they said, my mom makes a really good red velvet cake. Let me see if you can top hers. And I was like, I don't think I could top your mom because, you know, most time people don't always go with their moms. Or people are like, let me try. And then they tried and they loved it. And, you know, it brought them back to a memory that they had a long time ago when they was a child. And I really enjoy it. I get my inspiration from that, like giving people joy. You know, I want people to be satisfied. And, you know, when they're trying my product or when they're buying my product. And actually, when I get ready to um, decorate my cupcakes, I just kind of go on the fly. And I just like I just be like, okay, let me do a little bit of this and a little bit of that and see how it looks. And that's how I kind of get my inspiration or I'm always looking at things on Instagram or YouTube and I kind of just put my own spin on it. Well, so one of the things I want to pause you right there, Chrissy, and I, I just think this is something we can quick talk about because um, one is, is my co-host, Deborah Micus, who's now my fiance. So since we've done this podcast, since she's been on as a co-host, I've asked her to marry me. We did it in Amsterdam. So she's finally making a comeback. Oh, thank you. (laughs) And so I think um, I want to let the audience know that. But the other thing is um, I really wanted to quick introduce her because she heard we were talking about cupcakes and she came running out here to be a part of the podcast. (laughs) It's true. It's true. So here's the thing is I haven't been able to convince her to get on the podcast probably in six months. People probably thought she didn't even (laughs) exist anymore. But she heard the word cupcakes that we were doing a cupcake podcast and she came out here 
like you would not believe drool and everything <laughs> she's even got her coffee ready to dip the cupcakes in it's so. true it's true i'm really glad um and thank you for letting me join in it's always fun to do these i sometimes get bogged down with my other stuff but i'm super excited to hear about your adventures and how you got started so i'll let you guys kind of keep on and i'll jump in as you go <laughs> Okay, awesome, awesome. So we were talking about the flavors and the inspiration and all that, and I love where you're coming from. So one of the things I, I want to also talk about is I saw on your Facebook the whole pop-up shop thing and how you're doing these sort of cupcake pop-ups. So tell me about that idea and sort of how you execute on it, because I think we're seeing a lot of trending in pop-up restaurants and pop-up bakeries. So you're obviously executing on that. So how's that going for you? Um, actually, my first one that I actually went did um was last Saturday, and um it was at Smiley's Flea Market. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that, but it's down in um, Macon, Georgia. Um, and uh, uh, people just kept asking me, "Oh, you should do it. You should do it. Why don't you do a pop up shop?" And I was like, "Well, maybe. Yeah, okay, I'll try." And it was really successful. And um, I think they're great to do because you can actually get your product out to a different um crowd of people and um and i think it's a good thing you know um if you can i feel like it's a good way to kind of travel and get your products out there and get people to try them and to get positive feedback or you know just feedback in general because it i mean it was truly amazing um I, i get wonderful feedback and just wonderful advice i think more than anything I cherish and I, um, I really like all of the advice people give me when I'm out there because I am young and people, you know, people like they don't really see young entrepreneurs out there as much. So it's very encouraging. It keeps me going. Um, so I really appreciate like everything that I get from the pop up shops. Um, I know I sell my products and it's really good when I sell out, but more than anything, I really love the advice and um, just the conversation and getting to meet people and getting to know people. And um, that's that's what that's the great part about it. So do you ever get uh, like flavor requests from people when you're out and about or they're like, oh, you should make whatever? All the time. <laughs> actually, <laughs> I was just doing the red velvet. I actually only started doing red velvet. So any other flavor that I've added to my menu is solely off the request of people asking me, can I do this for them? So what's uh, your most popular flavor of all of them? Actually, key lime, which is really? surprising to me. Yeah, key lime. And actually, um, I always use fresh ingredients, natural ingredients. Um, I, you know, I, I think, you know, I think it, it gives a different taste, you know, it gives you a different taste and it gives you a different feeling when you know it's fresh, made fresh and from fresh ingredients. So I think people aren't used to having like the freshness from the key lime because I make with fresh lemons and limes and I use the juices from the lemons and lime, you know, it's fresh. So people are really into that. So that one always sell out. I always think my red velvet is going to do good because that's my first one. Like That's like my baby. But my key lime is like, People love it. Like, it was very shocking. (laughs) And where did you come up with that recipe? Was that something that you had growing up in your family? Or is it something you tasted somewhere and loved it? How did it all come about? Well, my friend asked me when she was um, having her, like, a little graduation party last year. She asked me to bring cup. She asked me to bring my cupcakes. I was telling her I was starting my business. And um, she said she liked the key lime. So when I looked up a recipe for key lime, I couldn't find a, a key lime from scratch. It was always like, oh, use a box cake, a lemon box cake mix. And then you just add like your ingredients. And I was like, well, let me try to look up um, a lemon cake from scratch and then I'll add the key lime so I basically kind of mixed it too and my key lime is actually a little different because I don't dye it green so it's like it, people are like oh what is that I'm like it's key lime and people kind of look at it strange until they taste it and I'm like oh my gosh it's so good so yeah I kind of just made it my you know kind of looked up a couple recipes and I tried my own I put a little spin on it so that's how I came up with my key so lime recipe so you doctored it up in your own kitchen <laughs> 
Yep, I did. <laughs> oh, that's good. So, so where do you sell most of your product? Do you have a storefront? Do you sell online? Are you selling I, through other restaurants? I don't have a storefront. Um, I have a uh, cottage food license, so I do it out of my home. So I'll go out. I go out to the Mulberry Market. Um, I'm out there every Wednesday um, from 3.30 to 6 p.m. And it's in Macon, Georgia. And um, I go out there. Actually, um, I just started going out because I and I just had a baby about three months ago. Ah, so, congratulations! Thank you. And um, so, just it's kind of been like you know trying to get back into working and getting out and um, just trying to juggle everything together. So hopefully, my intentions are in the future to some online. Um, I want to do more pop-up shops and more events, and um, I really want to go to different events um, around Georgia. I want to sell online. Um, that's my future goal. I'm not sure if I ever want to do a storefront, um, but hey, who, who, you never know which <laughs> you never way you'll know. go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, maybe the interim step is you could use other people's storefronts like you're doing right now. And maybe you could get on like people's, you know, menu or whatnot and you could sell to them and they would then, you know, have you on their menu every night or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's, that's one thing people have been asking me. Actually, one guy asked me like, what? Well, you should definitely get in the restaurants and, see what they if they need anything and I say yeah I, I've actually thought about it so I have thought about all those things so um well, I probably in the near future I would love to do something like that and having a little one too you know if you're in little mommy and me groups or that type of thing and through schools like moms having birthday parties and word of mouth and there's probably lots of avenues like that too you could start venueing down yeah, that's what uh, one thing I said, you know, um, I breastfeed. So uh, when I go to this breastfeeding class, I've been planning to go there for months. And it's just been, you know, um, I haven't had the time. So uh, I do plan on like going out, you know, to, to and just giving people samples and see what they think and getting their feedback. You know, that's that's one thing that's that I really great idea. Yeah. Yeah, you so. could go with like little mini cupcakes and sample them all when you go. And then yeah, with your little yeah. business card. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's my that's something that I'm working towards. I am. So you mentioned your son and and wanting to, him to eat, you know, not fast food and clean food and, and sort of food you cooked. I mean, tell us a little bit about that. Is that something that you've always done or because you you had your son that you sort of went in that direction yeah um actually my first son um actually yesterday was his 10th birthday um <laughs> and uh i was really young when i had him so i was still eating a lot of fast food and um Myself and my mom, she didn't cook. So most of the time when my dad didn't cook at home, we would eat fast food. Um, so I was like, I really didn't want him to um, get on the, you know, get on that and get on fat. Because I knew it wasn't really healthy for him. So I started to cook more at home. Like started small, like, you know, with grits and eggs and um, fruits and stuff like that at home. And then um, it kind of just went from there. And I just most of the time um, I just now I, I hardly ever eat out. Um, if I do is, you know, probably because I probably haven't ate anything much of the day and I, I'm out and about and I need something to eat. But for the most part, I try to cook at home because it, it tastes better it's you know it tastes better to me that's just something that I prefer you know and I prefer for my children to have something that I and I know what's actually going into their bodies like I'm breathing their ingredients and I'm you know when I'm cooking uh for them and at least I know what they're eating and hopefully you know I hope because my son he you know he likes to eat fast food and stuff now that he's older um he likes to eat fast food and stuff like that but I'm um, thinking and he loves to cook too he likes to help me um he always uh, he knows that I cook more so he'll ask me can I cook this and can I cook that so hopefully when he gets older he will enjoy cooking as much as I do and he'll cook for himself as he gets older and his family um once he has one when he gets older 
And I, and I love that you're showing your son the entrepreneurial experience as well. I mean, you're going out there and you're doing this and you're building a business from scratch based on your talent, but also your hard work and your inspiration. So you're sort of showing them, you know, the next generation of potential future entrepreneurs and he already likes to cook. So it's really cool how that relationship is starting. It's something that you're passionate about, so he's taking interest in it. But now it's the next thing, which is your entrepreneurial spirit, which you're also passing on to him because he sees his mom going out there and doing that. Yeah, yeah, it's important to me because I think, you know, I think is you have a lot of freedom when you're an entrepreneur. And I think if um, I think it would have been something I would have done if I was younger, if I was kind of introduced to it. And actually, my dad actually had his own restaurant, but I never thought about owning my own business or any sort. But um, it's a certain it is it's very fulfilling. Um, and, you know, when you have a family, um, it is I'm not going to say it's easier but when you can um, kind of dictate your schedule, your own schedule, and I'm a, I'm a family oriented person. Um, and when I can take off days and I don't have to worry about getting in trouble for taking off days, so I have to take my son to the doctor um, or if my son's not feeling well, I have to stay at home with him. I don't feel bad, you know, about it or, you know, I'm not getting penalized for it. And I think that's something um, that's, uh, creates a less stressful lifestyle um, when you can have your own business and you your own boss um, and you don't have to really um, you your own boss so you only have to uh, how can I say this you're you only to accountable to, to yourself, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you make your own yeah, schedule you don't, have the, you don't have that extra stress so you only have to report to yourself so i think is i think it's a wonderful thing and he talks about things that he wants to do when he gets older like the type of business and stuff because i have talked to him about it and we talk about it and um so i just encourage him you know and i tell him it's you know i, I let him know and he sees it so hopefully you know when he gets older uh he'll go in the same route that i'm going in so if you grew up and your dad had a business and it never really occurred to you that you would do that, how did you end up starting your own business? Like what, what prompted that? Yeah, um, well, um, I was going, I was thinking about going back to school and then I was saying that, you know, some, that's something that I could do. I, like, I know I can bake. I have, I, I have a um, niche for baking. I like to bake and I do That's something that I do that I'm good at. And so, um, that's when I said I would do it. I, I was just like, this is going to be a side business. It's not going to be nothing <laughs> full time. Right. And then, you know, here I am doing it full time. <laughs> so um, that's how I kind of started. You know, I really wasn't thinking it would go. It was going to be as big as it is now um, or progress as much as it has progressed now. So I'm just very thankful um, for the opportunity. Um, that I have to be able to have my own business and have the amazing support from the community that I have. Yeah, that's definitely, you know, it's, it's fun to start a business, but it's also fun to have positive feedback. And so, yeah, maybe. yeah. so how long have you been at it? Um, actually, this is my um, first, uh, full first year, I actually started um, kind of like it wasn't a business business till about the first of last year. Mm-hmm. Um, then I had my found out I was pregnant with my son. And then I kind of had to stop um, and put it on pause. And now I'm like, full on after after that I went and got my six week check my doctor said everything was okay so I was like, all right so let's hit it hard so I just been hitting it hard um working hard every day since then and um just really putting in all the work uh to make it um be as big as it can be right and so so it sounds like you go to a lot of these are they farmers markets it kind of sounds like and so you I mean, how do you anticipate the volume you need to bring with you? And um, actually, uh, and since my dad has his own business before, um, his own restaurant, he kind of gave me a lot of, you know, uh, advice. Um, right now, because how cold it is and the weather and stuff, people, a lot of people don't come out. So I only take like maybe a few, and then I take some samples, and then. Um, if people sometimes people order right there on the spot and then I can give it to them the next day. I mean, the, you know, throughout the week or whenever they want it. Um, so um, it's kind of like 
I don't know. It's kind of like you never know. <laughs> like you never know what you're gonna get. Like last last week, um, last Wednesday when I went, I actually sold out. Like I take the same amount every week, and right. so like I actually sold out in less than 15 minutes, and I was totally shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, I was so amazed. Like I I, c- I couldn't believe it. Right. Um. So it's like you never know. And then Saturday I went, and then um, it took me longer to sell. So, but I did sell out. But people were still asking, and um. But you, so you just never, you just never know um, how it's gonna be. So, this is like my trial and error, right? You gotta um, get in a feel for it. So, when you go to those yeah. events, I mean, how much of it? I mean, I know you probably want to do both, but do you end up doing more in sales of people just walking by who are like, "Oh my god, that looks delicious! I want one," or how much of it is people who are like, "Take your business card and then call you for because they have an office meeting or they have a birthday party or you know." Do you end up getting um, more business outside of the actual event? Actually, no. I actually get more actually at being at the farmer's market, being out within the public. Um, but in them try the samples. Like, um, I always ask people, hey, you want to try a sample? And people will look, you know, people will look and they'll be like, you know, they'll come by and they'll stop and they'll look. And I'll be like, hey, you want to try a sample? And they'll be like, yeah, sure. And once they get a sample, they'll be like, oh, let me grab two of those or three of those or five of those or and that's how I really get them and um or they may try a sample and then they may be like oh can I put in an order you know uh for next week and I'm like yeah sure so I get I right now as of right now going out into the community asking people to try you know Right. getting their feedback. That's where I get most of my sales from. Right. Well, years ago, I don't know if this would work for you, but years ago I was in investment banking and I worked in a big building downtown Denver. And every Friday in our office, they did bagels. And it was always the same thing. And so I wonder if there isn't a way, because I know after a while you're kind of like, oh, bagels again. You know, you're just so used to it. But I wonder if you couldn't go into, you know, buildings like that have, that have big offices and do that because they bring in stuff, whether it's people's birthdays or whether it's just their Friday thing that they do or whatnot, if there isn't an angle for you that way. And that's then you know exactly what the quantity is. Yeah, true, yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely love to. Um, actually, that's one thing that I have on my to-do list is to actually start in my and for Sife Georgia first and go out to all the businesses and give them samples and give them my business card, let them know what I'm doing, get to see what they're doing, you know, kind of see how, yeah. um, you know, what they're bringing to the community, what I'm bringing to the community, and just, you know, just supporting one another in the community. So, um, yeah, that's on my to-do list, actually, um, to go out and do that. Um, and so I'm still trying to, like, balance everything because I am, I stay at home with my son for the majority of the time. Right, he's still little. Um, yeah, he's still little. <laughs> itty, so it's itty. like... Yeah, and I'm waiting for it to warm up because, like, once it warms up, like, he can go with me, you know, everywhere. <laughs> and I, I also brace feet, too. So it's like, um, he really, he, I mean, he takes the ball, he takes the ball well when I'm not anywhere around. Um, but when I'm around, he doesn't really care for it. So it's right. kind of like, you know, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, this is my first time. My first time, I, I didn't actually proceed with him. So it's totally different. So, right. um, you know, I'm just trying to <laughs> figure <laughs> yeah. it out. It's a lot to juggle. <laughs> yeah. So, but, um, yeah, um, I, I have, I have, and I'm, I'm thankful that you are telling me this is because it's wonderful. Like, um, because it, it, it gives me confirmation that, you know, that I'm going in the right direction and just my thoughts are just what I'm, where I'm trying to go. I should, you know, that I should, I shouldn't think that it's not going to go a certain way that I know that it's going to, it's going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the things I want to highlight about a business like yours and going to the farmer's markets is mm-hmm. that you're actually there, you're not just selling your product, but you're building relationships with your product where you have to deliver a product. I think a lot mm-hmm. of people go to farmer's markets and things, and they, they're they out there to try to sell their product and get people to taste their product, but they're not mm-hmm. building a relationship. So the mm-hmm. benefit of a cupcake business or a business like yours that other people need to realize and try to create in their own businesses if they're doing farmer's market is how do you have continual contact with the customer to build a relationship? And Mm -hmm. because you're also taking orders and doing it afterwards, you're continually building that relationship. And that's what it's about, right? You're having, not Mm -hmm. only do they taste you and how good it is, but then you're taking another bite out of the relationship with them by producing um, a food, pun intended. And, Mm -hmm. um, and, 
you know, you're, you're following up with them and you're building a relationship and you're customizing products maybe for them if they want a specific cake. So there's a lot there that you get to sort of add value to your consumer relationship and build it faster. And I think one of the things I love about what you're doing is you are out there. You have the determination to go out there and you understand that you have flexibility in your family life also doing what you do so you can concentrate on your family but what you're building is something if when your when your sons are old enough and your children are old enough and you're empty nest and you need something to do you've built this business you can go even further into with your time if you need to or want to 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 take up the time that you were spending on a family so you're building it now which i think is just so smart um and a lot of people don't see that or have that vision or start because, oh, I have kids. It's not time to start yet. No, well, that's the perfect time to start because yeah. you want to use your time and you want to support your family. But you want to build something in your life that you can really go after if you need to once the kids aren't around and they're independent and they're on their own. That's not saying they aren't still a part of your life and they still don't need you for mommy and daddy things. But it's more like um, you're building something now that potentially, you know, you have to do when they go off to college or when they do whatever, you have an empty nest, or even more, you're building it now. So if they ever want to get involved in it, it's being built right now, you know, and it's hard to see 20 years down the road, but Mm -hmm. you're giving them the entrepreneurial spirit and you're giving them an avenue by which they can build their own legacies also like you're building. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah, that's yeah. I am doing that and um I tell my son all the time I'm like, Yeah, you know, I don't I'm not really pushing I want him to go to college, I do, but I also told him I said, This is gonna be your business when you turn eighteen. This is gonna be all yours. And uh that's why I want him to see it's good that he sees the ups and the downs because it's not easy and I tell him all the time. He doesn't really understand now, but I'm like, you know, I kinda try to simplify it for him as much as possible but I told him I said this is what you're going to be doing when you turn 18 years old I want you to know how to do it from the ground up so you'll know how to manage when it's once it gets bigger you'll know what to do you'll know you'll be here from the bottom so you'll know how it goes in and out um so yeah I, I my goal is to pass it down to my my children and um let them run it and um just pass it on down from generation to generation and create that generation of wealth that um that I have that I have a, a vision for. That's what I have a vision for for my family. That's awesome. You know, we talk. Justin and I are part of a leadership gr- uh, group, and we talk a lot about vision and about kind of building. Like, you have to have the vision in your head to be able to achieve it. You know, you have to kind of picture what that's going to look like and actually move yourself into that and visualize it all. And so I think the fact that you have that in your head and you're anticipating what that is, it makes it, it that's like the first step of really being able to achieve it is because you have something you're aiming for. And so I think it's great that you're doing that with them. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. You know, it's, it's an awesome feeling to see, like you say, see that. And um, just like, you know, uh, you can manifest anything in your life. And um, I just realized how powerful your your thoughts are. And, you know, you hear all the time, you hear all the time that your thoughts are so power, powerful. And, you know, you, that's why you should keep them in a positive direction. But I really reflected on that yesterday. And I'm actually seeing it, how powerful um, it is to, uh, how powerful you can manifest whatever you want in your life. So it's like the sky is, is is a limit, yeah. beyond the sky you, right. you know you don't have any limits i think it's even beyond the sky there is no limits um anything you put your mind to you can definitely you know bring it alive in your life bring it to life right you know i think it's also great because i mean i i have two children they're now grown children but uh, it's a lot. You, I, I know what you're going through and trying to have little ones and trying to manage a company, and it's a lot to do. But it's also incredibly rewarding. And I think for your children to see you being able to juggle that, that's just really, in my opinion, great modeling for them to kind of see that it, it you don't have to stop trying for your goals because 
your time is being taken because you have a child or, you know, you can find ways to make your family a priority. You said before, like your family is such an important thing to you and you're a family person. And there's a way to do both. There's a way to, and you already are incorporating them and wanting them to see part of what it is you do and, you know, really building it for them down the road. But in the meantime, you know, at their age, they can see what they can see of it. And I think it's super cool what you're doing. Well, oh, thank something that they can't learn in school um yeah sorry my mic dropped a little bit there for a second but they can't learn it in the classroom and some of it you can learn maybe through a coach or through a teacher that really pushed you but nothing's like the modeling that your parents can give you on being an entrepreneur and they're seeing it and you know they can't learn it in the classroom and there's no classes in college or in community college or in school that'll ever teach you how to be an entrepreneur or what that spirit is, you know? And it's Mm -hmm. almost like for you, you didn't even know you wanted to be, but it's naturally inside you, maybe because your father was one, or maybe you were just born with it, but it's something that is there. And when you have it, you know, you have it and you sort of just follow it instinctually. And so I think that's just such a cool part of your story. Um, also, Yeah, most definitely. I never I never thought that I would, but I always knew that I wasn't supposed to be working for anybody else. <laughs> I yeah. always knew that. I'm like, I'm not supposed to. And I'm actually like, you know, I'm a hard worker and I like to work. Uh, right. you, know, I've, you know, I grew up around that in my family. Like my family, all, everybody works in my family. So uh, it was just, it was, it, I, it never felt right that I was working for somebody else. So. I knew I knew it was time when it when it was time for me to leave my job in 2018, and I didn't know what I was going to be doing or how my income was going to be coming in. But I just I just had faith, and you know I just jumped out and I just really you know meditated on what I really wanted to do and what would be the best direction for me and my family. And um, this came about, and it's been it's been great. It's been great. And it's it, like you say, it's very challenging, but it's I think it's even more rewarding. Um, for me. Right. You know, I I find it interesting that you said you meditated on it. I was just reading a book and, you know, they were really, you know, suggesting that people need to meditate. And the reason for it is that when you can get yourself still and have that pure quiet and that stillness, that that's really where you can hear and you can be creative and you can see that. And it's so interesting that you just said that it's a little serendipitous. Like I literally just read this in a book and here you're saying that's actually how it came about for you. And so it's interesting, right? And all of a sudden, you know, you weren't thinking about necessarily starting a cupcake business, but in the stillness, that's where you found that concept. And and it's working with you having children and figuring out how to do all of that. Yeah, yeah. Meditation is very powerful, you know. Um, You especially, and I know you like I know you know with having children, you have to have you have to take care of yourself first in order to be able to take care of everybody else. (laughs) Right. You can't take care of yourself, or if if you you can't take care of anybody else until you take care of yourself first. And meditation is something that um, you know it allows you to have. I I believe that it allows you to have a less stressful life. I feel like it brings you back, like you say, it still just brings you back to center to your center self so you can't have those thoughts and you can't have those conversations with yourself and um about what you need about those steps that you need to take in your life well and one of the things about what you just said well first i want to i'll dive into but first i want to drop the name of the book it's super rich by russell simmons uh the founder of def jam records so i just want to drop that and the brother of Rev Run of Run DMC. <laughs> that was so, what I was okay, reading. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I have so, to check that out. Yeah. That's a great book. Um, we just read it in our leadership group, Deborah and I, and I thought it was pretty phenomenal. Uh, it's worth reading for anyone that wants to tie meditation to business and success, not only for wealth as in money, but in terms of wealth as a family and, and sort of tying it all together and where real richness comes from our wealth and, and purpose yeah, happiness yeah, yeah it's, mm-hmm. it's pretty cool um the other yeah. part is um you know in your story you were talking about you know how you got to where you are and you sort of have this vision of moving forward and you can visualize it in the power of manifesting something you know everyone thinks these things are hocus pocus or pie <laughs> in the sky things but 
you know, you, you know, believe that and you're never going to get what you want because you're never going to manifest it or visualize it in your brain. And, and then you're going to say, Oh, someone's lucky. Well, the lucky person isn't a lucky person. There's someone like yourself that literally can visualize what they want. They see that future for their son when they turn 18 and it's his business and they see, you know, what they want to do and where their goals are. And it may not go exactly that direction, but every step is a move in that direction or a pivot in that direction. So, I mean, I really encourage the audience, if you're really listening in and heard what Chrissy just said, it's that you can, if you believe and you can actually visualize it in your head and you see where you're needing to go, that is a very powerful thing. And not only does that happen, but for some reason it attracts that type of stuff to your life. I mean, I, I, I'm a firm believer in positivity and how you attract it. And if you want something bad enough and you can visualize it in the future, you're going to attract the things that you want surely through your actions and your mindset. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely true. I'm, I'm a firm believer, even though it's hard to kind of see it when, when you're first starting up and it's hard. It's, it's definitely challenging. It's not easy. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. It's not yeah. Easy. Not for the faint of heart. Yeah, and I never thought I would be where I am today starting my business. But, you know, I mean, you have to you have to have that vision because that's um like you said earlier, you have to have it because that's what you have to hold on to when you have those hard times or those challenging times or those moments. And it keeps you going like you have to keep it, it keeps you going. And then the people, they keep you going, too, because once you give them something good, they come back for it. Like, you know, I have people I've only been out at the market, the farmer's market. I've been out there probably I just started in, maybe in February or well, January. And I to have people come out there every week to just for me, knowing just to come out there just for me to get to buy a, c- a cake for me. That's something special to me. That's because that means everything that I put into it. You know, it you know it gives it re- it gives a special it's it gives them a special feeling. Um, I don't know what feeling it gives them, but it has to fulfill them in some type of way for them to come back and be like looking for me. Um, and to look for it, you know, not, not necessarily for the product, but just what I give, you know, when I do give the product, not only just the product, but myself also. So that's one thing that, you know, I'm grateful for and I'm thankful for. And I cherish that, that, that one, that's another thing that keeps me going. You know, that's really great too, because I mean, part of that, you know, that's a relationship, right? They come out to see you to, to, to have your special product. And, you know, I think the more you can capitalize on that and build that relationship and whether that's through inviting them to your social media stuff, um, or even getting theirs so that when you go and you do a pop-up scenario, you can let them know about it and invite them and, you know, really kind of build that relationship. So you can keep in contact with them like, Hey, I have a new flavor and I'm going to be at X, Y, Z. And, you know, really kind of encouraging those relationships because those are the things that take off and you never know who people are or, you know, what they have in life. And maybe you can help them and maybe they can help you. But all of those things kind of build in a positive direction. And it all starts with the relationships and you being out at those farmer farmers markets and having the meet and greet and talking to them. And if they're coming week after week and getting to know them by name, those are all like incredibly powerful things. I mean, that's what everyone's trying to do through social media, but you're getting to do it in person. And so if you can really nurture that, I, you know, that's going to be probably your launching pad. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like people, um, people say, um, uh, all the time you should push social media, push, push, push. But, um, I've actually got more sales from, building relationships with people right um you know not to say i'm not building a relationship with people on social media because i am too but it's a different type of thing when you can actually see the person that's making your product and, and you can actually talk to them and like you said build a relationship and you know um another thing about being out there at the farmer's market is that i get to socialize with other entrepreneurs um yeah. and you know support and we get to support one another and that's one thing that i said that i wanted to do i said i don't i want to surround myself um, with more like-minded people, um, and I'm I'm able to do that this year. Like I said, I put that in my mind, and that's what I was going for. And now it's coming, you know, coming to light now. So I'm around people that yeah. are more people that are like me. 
um, which is awesome. Yeah, that's super powerful. I mean, that's something as part of this leadership group we talk about. It's like you have to surround yourself with people who have a similar vision in life. You know, because if you hang out with people who don't have the same thing and, you know, they just want to do their life in a different way, you know, that's their prerogative. But if you want to grow and have, you know, you need to surround yourself with mentors and people who can help you achieve that. And, you know, and so I think you mingling with these other entrepreneurs is a wonderful thing. You know, Justin and I, for numerous years, have gone to the flavor of Georgia. And every time we go, you know, we meet some of the people come back here for years. So we kind of have this whole group of people that we've gotten to know each other. And it's been really fun over the years to watch because not only have they become our friends, but seeing how they all are starting to work together. We're seeing them kind of take their products and meld them together to do like a co-product. And I'm like, that's so cool. How fun is that? Because then they get to kind of partner up on, you know, a product line and share in that and the collaboration that goes into it. Just, it's so much fun energy and creativity and kind of bringing, you know, all of their assets to one concept to push it forward out into the world. And so it's fun. It's been fun watching for sure. So I'm excited to hear that you're making those relationships. Yeah, you have to, if you want to be successful in business, you have to make, you have to build relationships. Um, you have to, cause you know, you, if you don't, you, you I don't know if you will be successful. I just don't think you'll be as successful. Right. You may be successful, but you won't be as successful. You have to build relationships because we are people. We're not we're not robots, or exactly. Items or things like that. We are people, so we have to. You have to get to know your people, and like that's why I get most of my inspiration from. I get it from. I get it from building relationships and people in the community. Um, well, so I think a, it's very important. Yeah, there's a lot of knowledge you guys can share too, you know, because you're at different yeah. phases of your companies. And, you know, whether it's someone brand new and they're like, how'd you do your logo? And you can share that with them. Or whether you're growing and you're like, gosh, how am I going to package this? Because someone wants me to do a birthday party. Like, how am I going to package it to get it to them? Or, you know, you can kind of work with each other and use each other's you know, resources, whether it's a supplier or whether it's, you know, there's different ways that you can really share that knowledge and help each other grow their businesses. Yeah. And I get that all the time. People tell me all the time, like, well, you should do this and you should do that. And it's been very helpful. So yeah, it's, yeah. People ask me and I, you know, like you said, you just give advice and, um, people, you know, like main, I think one, um, one, uh, one lady, she was like, she didn't know how to do Google voice. So I was like, Oh, I can show you how to do that. And, um, you know, I get advice from her about, you know, things that she's doing out in the community and what she thinks works and what doesn't work. Cause she's also a baker. Um, we do different items, but she also bakes too. So it's, it's, it's really good to, you know, That's get awesome. out there and networking. Talk to people, yeah. yeah, and I want to tap onto that, Chrissy, or I, and I hope you're coming to the summit because this is exactly the type of things that we'll be looking at is how can we basically put what you get, what you naturally do, which is network with people and build relationships with people. Um, I actually want to not use the word network. I want to actually say build relationships with people, but we're going to try to put that on steroids for you guys and accelerate it at a rapid rate so that you guys can... Um, can meet more people and learn more from each other. So one is, is I think you're on to something and what you said right there is just so spot on on the way to grow your businesses, but you've got to be willing to do it and take the risk to do it and get to know people and be vulnerable, right? It's not easy yeah. to make friends and meet new people and build those relationships. Yeah, it's definitely not. I'm actually like, you know, actually, um, when I was younger in high school, I was very, I was very, I, I socialized a lot, but, um, mainly just in my little circle, like, uh, I was very athletic in school and I played a lot of sports. It's, if you ever come to Forsyth, Georgia, um, there's not very much to do. So it's either get a job or play sport or do something extracurricular activity. And, um, I, I enjoy sports and I got into that, but as I got older, I wasn't, uh, as social, um, but I knew that's something I would have to do. I would have to get out and, um, cause I'm kind of shy, you know, I can be kind of shy, but you know, you have to, you have to open up and you have to, um, let people get to know you, you have to get to know people and just build those relationships. So they're important. Yeah. Deborah and I were just talking about this earlier today. We were both the shy kids. <laughs> I was, I remember hiding behind my mom's like skirt when she took me to kindergarten and I was like, so shy. I didn't want to talk to anyone. 
Yeah, yeah, me too. I used to have, have my mom a lot too. <laughs> yeah, right. I've gotten over a, a lot of it, but I definitely have my comfort zone. You know, I like being in a smaller group of people. Justin, on the other hand, you could throw him in front of an audience of thousands of people and he would love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would yeah. not. <laughs> yeah. I grew yeah. into that. Let's be honest. I, gr- yeah. I grew into that. That took a lot of work. It didn't come easy mm. to me. I was a very shy person. And if you ever turned a microphone or a video camera on in front of me in my early in my career, I could, I would freeze up and not be able to talk and just fall <laughs> yeah. apart, honestly. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Maybe you can give me a few pointers on that because I'm definitely working on that more and more every day. Um, just being more social. Well, we'll just, instead of pointers, we're just throwing you right to the wolves. We got you on the <laughs> podcast. Is that, there you that, go. Is that the best way? You're killing yeah, that's it. That's the best way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's that. And then, you know, we're definitely going to have you on for a part two because we want to continue to tell your story. So definitely want to get you back on here. So you can sort of, you've done part one with us now. So, you know, we want to continue to tell your story because I love the positivity of your story. You know, it's so important oh. that people don't understand. And we talked about this the last podcast I just did that we released um, that how important the positivity is to attract people and how important positivity is to achieve your goals. And it's sort mm-hmm. of a little bit coming, you know, as you concentrate on things, it's interesting how these topics circulate in your life when you're focused on something and you know something's the right thing to do. And positivity mm-hmm. is one of them. And I think you just have such a positive attitude towards all of it and your vision and, and the way you're teaching your children and your business as well as the relationships you're building. So, you know, you're not out there just to try to sell cupcakes. What you're doing is you're building valuable relationships with people that mean something. And yeah. so that there's value there on top of just selling cupcakes or cakes yeah. or whatever. And I'm not downplaying a cupcake or a cake. I'm just saying it's more like the vehicle by which we build these relationships. It's the vehicle by which you give people the experience to have memories. So, you know, a birthday cake is a a memory that's built around a group of people for celebrating someone's birthday. But the cake is, you know, a way of bringing them all together for a birthday party. So things like that, that I think that are so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. And yeah, it is important. Oh uh, yeah, I'm thankful. I'm really I'm thankful and grateful for the opportunity that I get. Um So uh, Chrissy, as we start to wrap this up, I'm gonna ask you a question. What are some of the things you love about what you're doing the most? I mean, if you could pick like three things, what are the things like right now you love doing the most in in being an entrepreneur and, and launching this business? Um, I think the number one thing is building relationships. Um Number two, uh, um, getting the feedback, um, because feedback helps me grow and it helps, uh, helps me, you know, help me to grow as a person. Um, and just, uh, giving people fulfillment, you know, the people, when people say, oh my gosh, that was so good. Um, that, that really, that really touches my heart because I put, I I put a lot of, I I put a lot of work into it and, um, just to know that I can make someone happy, uh, with my product is, is, is very rewarding. I really enjoyed it. And I love that. And so lastly, as we, we wrap up, this is going to be my last question, which is if you could share anything with anyone that you've learned along the way to help them what would it be? Um, to keep going. Um, regardless of how many setbacks that you have, um, regardless if something doesn't go your way or um, sometimes timing is off, but keep going. Don't always keep your dreams um, and your vision ahead of you and you, you meditate on it and you keep going, you keep pushing yourself, keep pushing yourself and, you know, it'll all pay off. Just keep going no matter what, just keep going, no matter what anybody says or how anybody, you know, what they, well, how they feel about what you got going on. Just listen to your inner self and keep going, keep pushing yourself. I think that's amazing advice. It's yeah. Definitely. No one can, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a uh, good all the way around. It can be applied not just to, <laughs> to entrepreneurs, but that's good for everyone. Yeah, and um, mm-hmm. I'll quote Kanye West here, but every setback, every 
negative saying it's the steam to power your dream you know you got to yeah. use it you got to turn negativity into positivity or an opportunity to do even better and i think yeah. that's so important in what you said so thank you chrissy so much for coming on the podcast oh well, thank you guys for having me such an honor thanks for letting me join in a little bit late <laughs> <laughs> oh well thank you for coming look yeah. hey I'm, I'm maybe the listeners will be like Oh yay! She came back. Well, <laughs> that would be great. I know that would. But they're going to be. You're the only one that's been able to lure her out of the office. I know. I'm going to have to track you down and come taste your cupcakes. Okay. Awesome. All yeah. Right. Yeah. Hopefully. Um. Yeah. Hopefully, I get you some so you can tell me what you think about them. Oh, that sounds great. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for listening in, and thank you for joining in. Pass on what we're doing here. Pass on uh, information about the summit if you guys are listening in, and try some of Chrissy's cupcakes if you guys are in Georgia. Um, I hope that Chrissy one day gets an online business. Maybe that's the next step, so we can order pancakes to our house in Colorado. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> so, yeah. so thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Mm-hmm.